Welcome back. This is the last part of Lecture 8 showing the four changes in equilibrium. This time we're going to show an increase in supply. Start out the same way. Supply increases, remember, it's now rising. It's moving outward to the right. Supply is now at S2. S1 is gone. So this price here, all of a sudden we have a jump in production, a jump in how much is on the market. Why? Uh, maybe uh, improvement in technology. Maybe they're able to cut their production costs quite a bit. Maybe they, uh, maybe they use um, natural gas in powering their plants, and all of a sudden natural gas is ten uh, costs uh, fifty percent less. So now the new quantity supplied is here. Customers are still here. Quantity demand is still there. Nothing's happened to us, and so we're still buying Q D amount which was the old equilibrium QE1, but now they're selling a lot more. What do we have? We have a surplus. Surplus. How do I know it's a surplus? Because the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. How do I know that? Because again, the quantity supplied, the new one is further out to the right than the quantity demanded. Again, anything out to the right is an increase, is more. So when we have a surplus, what gives? And that is the price. Price will fall. Yeah, uh, may, uh, yes, maybe there was an improvement in technology, but now there's the market's been flooded, and now something has to give, and that's going to be the price coming down. As the price comes down, two things happen. Laws of supply and demand kick in. With the price coming down, that's an uh, inducement to the consumers to buy more. And again, every point along the demand line is a, uh, represents consumers. And so when the price comes down, we have the consumers moving this way, going down to the right along demand, and they're buying more. That person just bought more that person just bought, that person just bought, these people are now buying in the marketplace. If you already bought one or two, you might buy three or four, and you might be due to the market. Again, every point along the demand is, is a consumer buying the item. At the same time, a lower price is an ins a disincentive to the suppliers, and so the quantity supplied is going to be going down, and that's right here. As the suppliers cut back, every point represents another supplier cutting back. And so the market is moving toward equilibrium right here. So again, let's say this point is A. Call this point B. This point C. Then who's going from A to C? Right there. Well, it's going along which line? The supply line. So if it's going along the supply line, it's the suppliers, the sellers. They're going from A to C because it's going down to the left as a decrease. Is going to be well. It's going along the demand line, so it's got to be the customers. And because it's going down to the right, the right's more, and therefore they're increasing. So we're buying more. Sellers are selling less, less. Right here, and this keeps happening until we're back in equilibrium. And that takes place right here. Price eventually starts stops falling. About there, P2, and right here, the buyers and sellers meet up, and now we're back in equilibrium there as well. QE2. On the right side, let's go back and redo what we just did in a much simpler manner. So again, this would be S1. D1, we call this equilibrium price PE1. Supply increases. Label it S2. I could label it S3, it doesn't matter as long as it's a different one. I have an arrow going up to the right. First equilibrium point, 
second equilibrium point right there. And so I'm just showing the what I call the bottom line. Lower price over here, higher quantity. So it's actually two ways to get a, a market surplus. One way is for the supply to increase. So if supply increases, that will give us a surplus, or if demand decreases. And both of these will give us a surplus. When you have a surplus, what happens? It's right here, price comes down, coin demand goes up, coin supply goes down until equilibrium. While I'm talking about two ways to get a surplus, I'll just review a bit. There's actually, so there's also two ways to get a shortage. The supply comes down or the demand can go up. Both these will give us a shortage. On the exam, I've asked you what happens when there's a shortage. The answer is pretty simple. It's going to cause the price to go which way? Up. And when the price goes up, that's going to cause the quantity demanded to go down as customers drop out. Causes the quantity supply to go up as more sellers enter the market until equilibrium. So almost done with chapter three. The last thing to do is to show what happens when supply and demand change at the same time. So far we've shown our four changes separately. Now there's also four possibilities of them changing at the same time. And that'll be the last lecture for chapter three.